and you just keep on holding it and try to keep a like a natural look on your face. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, it's interesting because just sustained stretch makes the work so much easier. Because the fascia is naturally bound where it feels the most strained because of how you're using it. And a simple fascial stretching could really help pain quite a bit. Okay, so that's mostly for uh, lung. But if you just simply come down and turn palm down, then you're going to feel in a different area. And since, if you know that it starts here, I usually grab that index finger because it makes more of an emphasis on this line. You okay? Mm -hmm. Feel any fascial burn? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I love your mm -hmm. economy of work. <laughs> okay, right, right where the meridian is, happens to be. Okay. Um, for large intestine on the table, like on the floor, you can initiate this way because they're going to feel it in the deltoid a lot where the large intestine goes through. Right? You could use their body weight and come over to the side. And really stretch. I mean, if you know the location of the meridian, you know, let your experience and imagination take over, right? But, you know, for it to be an effective stretch, from my point of view, is that the therapist should, it should be easy for the therapist. The therapist should be in a grounded position so they're not hurting themselves to do supposedly something good for the other person. If you're hurting, there's some better way of doing it. And also, too, if you can stay clear when you're working, meaning that you shouldn't have your shoulders up or working in rotation. Like, I see a lot of people, like, they're going like this to do the stretch. You have to keep open to the stretch so that you can more readily utilize your body weight. You know, you feel that a lot on the floor. I mean, we can make adjustments in our body where it, it's easier on the body. So if it's easier on your body, it's better stretch. It's just clearer. There's less between you and what you're trying to do. That's large intestine. Uh, with on the table or the floor, uh, when there's chronic holding, and you'll see that by the heads of the humerus turn inward, like we were discussing before. <laughs> the <laughs> emphasis. That's why you get the big bucks as the model. <laughs> uh, we're trying to uh, bring some relief here so that the shoulder can go back. Because when the shoulder goes back, it releases the restriction of both the anterior and posterior meridian. Okay, so uh, there are a couple of things for chronic uh, holding here. Uh, and in chronic holding, what muscles do you think are affected here? Pec minor. Pec minor. Pec. Uh, right, and particularly pec minor and pec major. Uh, pec minor because of the angle that it goes at more of a 45 degree angle and it goes uh, up and attaches to the coracoid process. So one way of, of approaching sus with sustained stretch is to bring the arm in, shortening the muscle, and then using your elbow <coughs> to lean in. Pressure's okay, sir? Mm -hmm. Right, because this way I'm just leaning in, and you can hold the stretch a little bit easier. And by turning the hand in, you're shortening the muscle so it'll take the pressure a little bit more. It's not stretched. Especially if it's tight, you want to relieve a little of it so that it'll take the pressure. And then you can turn it into a pin and stretch. So you're holding that. You're still okay? Mm -hmm. And then you just roll the arm up like this. So it's like you feel a little bit more now? Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> <laughs> it's, a pin, it's a pin and stretch. Okay. Easy. At least I like Tai Chi hands. Like cloud hands. Like this. This is the premise of this. It's like you're supporting, shortening the muscle leaning in, engaging the muscle, and then turning it out. So it's a pin of stretch. Easy. Um, in putting that stretch together, focusing on pec minor, 
because of its attachment to the coracoid process, which rolls the head of the humerus in, there's two other muscles that attach to the coracoid process. Okay? Coracobrachialis, and also the uh, short head of biceps. They both attach, the, all three, those are the three muscles that attach to the coracoid process. So when you see chronic holding here, along with pec uh, minor, coracoid brachialis, which runs in that groove between the bicep and the tricep, and the short head uh, of, the, of the bicep attaching here, you can simply engage the muscle with the palm of your hand, like this, pin, and then bring the arm down like this. Because what that does is roll the muscle back and takes the stress off the attachment at the coracoid process. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and check it, right? This is the technique. But, you know, you have to stay focused on how you're using your body as a therapist. So, you know, you want to have nice stance. You want to be open to the work. You want to be able to utilize your engagement by keeping the work in front of you. Not in rotation. I don't know why you would do this. <laughs> but rotation, because I see that a lot when people are working. They're in rotation, or they're doing this. I don't understand. You have nice... <laughs> yes. <laughs> Engage. Right? Okay. Long, large intestine. Easy. So that after you loosen it, you want to encourage a little bit more sustained openness. If you were doing this on the floor, I would slip my foot underneath there, or my knee. But here, because you can use the table as a brace and just simply turn your fingers up there and let the weight of their body come in, it acts as a lever and opens up the chest. Okay? Easy. Actually encourages a little deep breathing because it takes the pressure off the lung. You know the lungs come way up here. You know, there's a stem of the lungs that come way up here. Okay. All right. That's enough to get you going. Okay.